Up next, we're going to do a recap of the Windsor Extra Life board game blitz that hit this past weekend. All right, first off, I know people are going to be asking, what's a board game blitz? So the board game blitz is a multiple round, no elimination board game tournament. Now, this format was created years ago for something called the Great Canadian Board Game Blitz, which was a circuit of board game tournaments held in prep for Fan Expo Canada, which is a big, huge event that happens in Toronto every year. Winners of regional blitz tournaments would get passes to Fan Expo, which is a huge prize, actually, a huge significant value there, where you would go to Fan Expo and then on Sunday compete to be crowned the Great Canadian Champion or the Great Canadian Board Game Blitz Champion. Yeah, no, it, it's uh, it's tough enough to get into Fan Expo with tickets, uh, yeah. so and getting tickets is a whole other thing. Uh, but uh, if you uh, if you like crowds and geekery, it is <laughs> the event to go to for that uh, that sort of stuff in Canada, really. Yeah, and it's becoming more and more tabletop focused over the years. It used to be more pop culture, now tabletops invading more and more of it, especially with the popularity of D and D and Fifth Edition and Critical Role and things like that. Now, over the years, I've hosted a few of these tournaments in Windsor, and they've always been popular. But unfortunately, the people behind the actual Great Canadian Board Game Blitz um, fell apart. It fell apart. It's no longer running. The last one they did was in 2015. Um, basically, the head organizer decided he didn't want to do it anymore, and no one picked up the slack. So there hasn't been an actual Great Canadian Board Game Blitz since but what I've done is taking the format because I love the board game blitz format and I've run a few loads of blitz tournaments using the original rules. Now this won't have anything to do with fan expo anymore. We're not tied to them at all. It's just basically I'm using their format for my own personal events. Now the last one of those happened this past weekend at the CG realm as part of our 2019 extra life event. That's right. This is just another one of the steps on our way to helping the uh, sick children across uh, North America. So the way the Blitz works is each round, a selection of games are featured for that round. Competitors are going to pick which game they want to play. Uh, it starts off in random order, but then as you get further in the tournament, it's based on your player rank. From this selection of games, they're, they decide what they want to play. And as games fill up to the max player count, which is three or four, depending on the number of people, the choices get limited. Once all players have chosen the game, the games get played. Uh, it's all following the rules right out of the box, no variance, no expansions. Players get points based on their placement. So many points for first place, so many two, so many points for fourth place. These points are then weighted based on the length of the game. So a long game, the two-hour games are worth 10 points for first, whereas a short game is only worth five points for first, as an example. At the end of the day, you're going to add up all your overall points, and the winner is the player with the most points, and we give awards for second and third as well. Nothing, uh, nothing too complex. It's not one of your crazy math, uh, you know, tree tournaments where you need to nope. figure out your final 16 and count down to game day. So just simple math and everyone can figure out up front, you know, if, you know, what they're going to do, how they're going to do it, you know, based on, uh, you know, what game they're playing and what places they might come in, what their scores are going to be at the end of the round. Very true. Now for Saturday's event, I ran a five round event. Uh, it was two short rounds, two medium rounds and a wrong round. Uh, we started with 10 players. We had a couple players join in during the later rounds, and we did have a couple players decide to leave during lunch. Now, this is allowed. If you skip a round, you just don't get scored for that round. And it actually is possible to, say, win the tournament by showing up only the last two rounds and placing first in both if other players didn't play so well. Overall, by the end of the day, we had 13 different participants. Now, I got to say, I, I got to admit, 13 kind of sucks. Like, that's, that's I was very disappointed by the turnout. I think our biggest mistake, though, is we ended up putting this on the weekend of Canadian Thanksgiving, and that probably was not the best choice. Now, I don't know how we could have multiple meetings leading up to this and no one went, hey, that's Thanksgiving. But hey, oh, well, <laughs> it is what it is. It was set and done and we advertised when it was going to be. So we had it. Now, I got to say, though, those 13 players did seem to have a great time and it was a fun event. We had a lot of fun. It went very well. I just wish more people were out there. You no, know, it's, you know, it's funny. The Canadian Thanksgiving is an interesting thing. Canadians take it seriously. It's not like it's yep. a, it's a fake holiday. Uh, like Chris Columbus Day tends to be in America. Uh, Indigenous we, People's Day. Is that what Depending it is? on which state you're in now. Oh, okay. Um, so frankly, it's, it's kind of, uh, you know, a big deal. It's it a is big our deal. Big, it is our big turkey day. But yep. 
That being said, because the majority of our media probably comes from the U.S., we don't necessarily think about it in advance. Yes. Uh, you know, we've, we'll have those family members who are planning the big dinners, but they always assume that everyone else knows about it. And uh, both myself and many of my coworkers were scheduling uh, work on mm -hmm. the Monday. Just casually, yeah, yeah, we're going to be flying in on Monday what? and doing this, that, and the other thing until fun finally somebody speaks up and says, um, guys, that's Thanksgiving and we have to reschedule everything. Uh, so yep. it's a common, it's, uh, unfortunately, it is a common problem in Canada that you forget Canadian about Thanksgiving it. gets forgotten about until the last minute. It's, it's like a stealth holiday. Yep. And it does, it's never on the same weekend, right? It has that problem too. Like it, it moves and I don't, I don't even know how it moves. That's <laughs> one of those things I don't understand. Like it's not like it's always the third Sunday or something. Or maybe it is. See, that shows how much <laughs> we know about it. But yeah, we love celebrating it. And it's a big deal. Like, And the other thing is most people, because it's a long weekend, tend to do multiple meals. Like with both sides of the family in most cases. Whether that's mom and dad or whether that's his and hers. Whatever that happens to be. Or hers or hers and his and his. Whatever that happens to be is most people tend to do stuff the entire weekend. Like it's a, it's, it's a big thing. Uh, thankfully for my family, we don't, we do things on Sunday and Monday. So Saturday is free, but I think for a lot of people, they were not free that weekend. So next year, lessons learned. So at the end of the day, Saturday, it was a, uh, player I never met before, which was awesome. Uh, Shumi Wang, who took first place with 33.5 points. Now Shumi needs to sit at a table with Deanna because my God, out of five rounds, she came in first for four of them in second once. Like, that was an impressive showing. Uh, now, Deanna Tuzano did follow with 28.5. And then Sean Hamilton and Qui Van, or Q, better known as Q, were tied for third, both having 27 points. Uh, there are three tiebreakers in the Blitz rules. They still tied after all three tiebreakers. If I was thinking what I would have done is just taken the third prize prize and split it in half and giving it to both of them but instead they decided to rochambeau for it sean won with a deft use of paper over Quee's rock well you just can't take the gaming out of a gamer that's for sure <laughs> so in total we did raise 66 dollars for extra life which is a unique amount when we were looking for five bucks a head but we did have some people tossing some extra money so thank you and i do want to thank everyone who took part in the event uh, special thanks to the people who are willing to teach games during the event. I highly appreciated that. That meant I didn't have to teach every game every round. That was nice. Actually, it worked out I only had to teach one game around. That was the one silver lining of only having the number, slow, smaller numbers we had. Uh, also, big thanks to the CG Realm for giving us a place to play and for topping up the prize pot. Um, the prizes was half of the pot, plus the store donated a bit more to up that a little bit, and we gave out gift cards. Absolutely. So I think, uh, you know, despite a lower turnout and uh, problematic di scheduling uh, issues, uh, there's definitely some, some good has come out of it. Now, if you head over to the blog, tabletopbellhop.com, uh, I do I did a much longer, more detailed wrap up. I actually shared which games got played each round, who won each of these games, and had a little summary of how I thought the Blitz was going at the end of each round. I'm not going to get into all that detail here. Head over to tabletopbellhop.com and look for the Blitz wrap-up under On Our Tabletop. Now, what I do want to talk about here, though, is my overall thoughts on the event as a whole and kind of a look back, lessons learned. So the biggest disappointment for me, obviously, was the turnout. Uh, none of us realized we scheduled the event for Canadian Thanksgiving until it was way too late to change the date. Uh, we also had some problems advertising the event due to the limitations of Facebook. And what I got to do is move away from using Facebook. Yes, the Windsor Gaming Resource Group's there with 600 members in it, and it's been the best way to get a hold of people. But they, again, were limiting the number of people who could invite. I could only invite 50 people to the event myself, and they had to be friends. They had to be members of the WGR. Deanna had the same problem. We had people sharing the event, getting warnings, saying that I have limited attendance so that it would only be shared to a limited... I don't know. It, Facebook is trying to constrain things. And because I shared it, created the event as a group, it couldn't be promoted. So we couldn't even pay to promote it. So, you know, F you Facebook, I got to say overall, but hey, it's still the best way to get rid of hold of the most people. What I didn't think of until literally a week before was to put it up on Board Game Geek, which man, I should have done that way sooner because that's right to the target audience. So that's a lesson learned. Next year, I'm going to spend way more time trying to promote it on sites like Board Game Geek. I might even do the thing where I'll make a meetup account just for this 
where I'll make like an extra life meetup account and just list our meetup or our, our uh, Rotex life events. Uh, I just got to get the word out up there a little earlier in a few more places. Uh, meetup is not um, not where people are going right now. Apparently, they are charging. Uh, yeah, they charge even for a minimum account now. Yeah, so like, you know, like groups in Africa and things like that. There's 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 protesting going on right now. Wow. Whereas, uh, uh, so Meetup, the, the only way people are using Meetup is a basic Meetup where you can do for free, but you include a Google link to an actual, uh, <laughs> okay. an actual an actual Google Doc that that goes through everything because um, they are wow. they they have some poor business practices globally. Wonderful. Yeah. So, unfortunately, we don't have any good yeah, it's options right now anymore. for what's out there. Um, hopefully, somebody will step up. I said that it's driving me nuts. If there was a better way to, but anyway, get get the word out earlier, better to more places. <laughs> um, except for that, I think everything else went extremely well up until the last round. Um, I spent a ton of time before the event printing out board game rule summaries and player aids, and those really helped, uh, especially with teaching the game and for reference during play. Uh, it worked out well that every game had someone willing, able to, willing and able to teach it, which in some cases was me, but the other tables all had someone teaching, which was great. Um, th that is, of course, the silver lining with a low player count. I didn't have to be at multiple places at once, so that was good. Uh, the games all went well. Um, players played competitively. Everyone seemed very congenial. Like everyone had a great time. There were no arguments. There was no disputes that needed to be settled. Like it went as well as I think it could have. Absolutely. Now, one thing I do have to watch for next time, though, is teaching times for the game. So over the years, I've learned one trick on Board Game Geek, well, many tricks on Board Game Geek, but the Playing times on Board Game Geek are way more accurate than the playing times on the box, or what the publishers say. And this is what I've always used when planning out any of these Blitz tournaments or any other game night when I know I have exactly so much time to get something done. But what I tend to forget is that the Board Game Geek time does not include any time for teaching. Now that hurt Saturday, mostly in the first round, because the first round I was expecting to be lightning quick. And like I wanted to be, I wanted to get us ahead of schedule. Like I, I planned the first round thinking we're going to be done early, which will give me a wit, like a little bit of wiggle room for later. We didn't. We went over in the first round. And while the last round, two of the games took about an hour to teach, which just didn't work so well when you only allocate two hours to play. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's it's a real issue, and I mean, it's one of those things we actually talked about this in some way, to some degree, last week when we were talking about how you know, with fifty games being brought there, there's no mathematical way to teach all of those games. Yes, uh, but unfortunately, even with only thirteen people, you still run into some mathematical problems depending on how difficult the game is to teach. Now, from what I heard from people at the event and afterwards and people who sent me private messages and stuff, I, overall, reception was good. Uh, the one recurring theme we got, though, was that everyone thought the event was too much of a kind commitment. Um, we got this from people at the event as well as people who chose not to attend and who I got rid of, a hold of after were like, hey, I thought you said you were coming. What happened? So it wasn't just Thanksgiving that was holding people back, or that was part of it, right? They could be tied up on Thanksgiving weekend, but not for 10 hours. So I think any future Blitz events, I think I'm going to limit them to three, four rounds maximum instead of five, possibly even cut out the dinner, the hour dinner break, because once you're there for that long, you need to throw a dinner break in. Whereas if I cut out a round, I might also be able to cut out that dinner so that we don't have to require people to set aside so much time to be able to play. I'm even considering possibly knocking it down to three rounds so it can just be a quick afternoon thing instead of an all day thing. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think there's definitely there's definitely ways to do it. Uh, and we were talking earlier, like there's even the potential of stretching thing, uh, you know, stretching things out into different days. If that works better mm -hmm. for people, uh, you know, do it a two day, you know, four hours on Saturday, four hours on Sunday and get everyone home mm -hmm. time for dinner on both days sort of thing. That overall, I think it was a great success. It could have been better, but everyone who did attend had a great time, and we did manage to raise some money. Any money is better than no money. Hey, 66 bucks, that that's, counts, right? That's, that's, that's not a negligible amount of money. I would have liked to have been more, but I'm pretty happy with how it went. 